'twas brillig, and the slithy toes did gyre and gimble in the wave. Oop, sorry, wrong poem. Come join me in the sunless sea. Well, here we are, back again, back in fallen London. For some strange reason, the game didn't save right last time round, and I had to redo a load of actions. I think I'm back where I was, but if there's any slight differences, please forgive me. So anyway, we've done all the bits and pieces we want to do. We've picked up um, some souls to trade to Mount Palmerston. Let's pick up a few tomb colonists while we can. That's an extra three. We can sell those on the way up. Um, we don't need any more crew. We've got a maximum number of crew. We need, we need repairs. Let's have a quick look. Shipyard. Our hull is 66 or 75, so I don't really think we need to at the moment. And quite frankly, looking at these ships, there's nothing we can buy right now. So let's hold off on that one. Shops. One thing we definitely need is um, fuel and food, so we're probably going to be spending a lot of our money buying that, but otherwise we're not going anywhere, so let's just pick up um, as much fuel as we can at the moment with our 100 Echoes. So there we go, Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, that's given us 11 fuel, uh, plus what is in the tank. That should get us at least a little way. We've got a little bit of food, and we have 23 terror, so it would be good if we could avoid doing anything too terrifying. But let's go. And let's see what we can find. Let's have a quick look at the map before we get too far. I intend to go up to Vendebrite. And from there, find Mount Palmerston, which we don't appear to know just yet. But it should be up around here somewhere. Where's this? Anyway, we will have a look. But Vendor Bright at least will give us a bit of money. So here we go. fuel lost already and there's a pirate and we could really use avoiding them I think because last time we had any dealings with a pirate they handed us our trousers basically so let's just run away from them like sensible people I am really really hoping that they make a a, a, a version of this music available because I just love it. What's happening here? Recurring nightmares. You've begun to dream of a vast eye. It knows you. You cannot evade its gaze. Again and again you're alone in the wide black Z. The eye is aware. Your nightmare will come upon you from time to time, inspiring terror gain restful nights at your lodgings to help you resist it. If you defeat it, you may gain a secret. You've begun to suffer a nightmare to the vast eye. Mm. Not good. But at least here we are at Vendorite. So let's dock up. Perhaps gain a little bit of fuel. And by the looks of it, a touch of food. And see if we can find... Our next stop. Yes, I would pay good money for a download a copy of this music. It's incredible. Here we go. Let's fight. We have engaged an enemy. My thoughts here are we aren't really in danger from these guys so we need to, we should observe them a little bit uh, because that will give us um, 
Well, by, by various bonuses. Okay, so we'll chuck a flare up, and that should give us a chance to observe them. So, 24, not quite enough. So let's chuck another flare up, and then we'll observe them. We really need to get that mirror's value up. There we go, that's high enough now, so we can observe them a little bit. One, and two, and three. Our terror is 29, so we don't have to worry about them doing anything too terrible yet. Okay, let's shoot them, and then we'll observe them a little bit more. So we've observed them three times. We need to observe them ten times to get a bonus. So that's four, five, six, and seven. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, and ten. A little bit boring, I do apologize, but after that, we'll shoot them. That should be the end of it. Bats don't seem to have anything they want to do to us unless our terror is high enough. But that works for me. Our terror is made at 29 all along, so that's good. And this one should finish them off. There we go. That's killed them. Okay, so record any... Um, we have 30 observations. Okay, so... We no longer have any observations. We've gained five fragments. Okay, so that's good. Now, let's reduce terror. Because we're near port, we'll buy some food. Okay, we've lost two terror. So, all told, not bad. So let's just get in the dock and see what we can do. Okay. The tomb colony of Vendermite. First thing we want to do is go to the shops and sell these guys. That's given us a quick 45 echoes. While we're here, let's have a quick look here. We can sell recent use for echoes. That seems to be a good idea because we're a bit poor. And what can we do here? We can buy and sell supplies twice as expensive as they are in London mind. So I think we'll stick with what we've got for a second. It might come back and bite us if we run out of food. We'll see. Okay, so story. Um, let's go into Vendabite. We can't go have a, uh, a glass of wine yet. We can explore. We can visit the first curator. Z captains. The first curator gives audience. The first curator is responsible for the preservation of the tomb colonies. It has been here much longer than London, like all the oldest tomb colonies, but even tomb colonists dissolve in the end. Its time is close. And that is owned with witnesses, the curators, and... No okay, so... Alright, so here we go. No more light, the obsequious steward cautions you. The curator is terribly afraid of moths. He opens the door and you step into near darkness. A pair of luminous lamp lighter bees buzz in a latticed ivory tube. There is no other source of light. A banded shape, no larger than a child, lies crumpled on a couch. It lifts its head with obvious effort. It takes several seconds for you to distinguish its voice from the soft buzz of the bees. We can listen to the, a whispered request or ask about the Grand Sanatorium. Let's listen to the request. Cosmogon, Irigo, Pelican, Steward has list. Find them here and there across the wide black Z. Okay. Did I miss that? No. Okay, don't know what happened there. Except aha, uh -huh, okay, accept the commission. Here we go, so, there we go. It collapses, rustling back onto the couch. Even the effort of speaking seems to have diminished it a little. The audience is over. 
As the door opens, it shrieks for the finger of light that reaches across the floor. Outside, the obsequious steward nods. The book? Yes, the book. He hands you a slim, illustrated volume. The curator is old, old as dust. We will be grateful if you do this as one last favour. So, it looks like we've offer, opened up a, a few other side quests. So, we are looking for Pelagon, we're looking for Irigo, we are looking for Viric, we're looking for Violent, and we're looking for Apokian. Okay. So, we now have the Neath Bow, a book for children. One page is devoted for each of the colours of the Neath, which are not found on the surface. Okay, so we need to return to the Curator with each of the seven impossible colours in hand. The book's pages give you clues, but we will need to seek fire ports. Okay, so we have a page from the Neath Bow Gant, and we have a page of the Neath Bow Cosmogon. Alright, a quest. So let's explore. At the twisty tip of an odd little side street, welcoming yellow light glows from a gilt-lettered windows of a restaurant. A sign reads, Vengeance of Jonah. A beefy tomb colonist bustles up. A grey moustache pokes impertinently out from under his bandages. Come in! Come in! We've lost some terror. And we've lear we have one learning about the bandage Poissonia. So... We can't recruit him yet. We need 300 Echo. And we need to find him. Okay, so we found him, but we don't have enough money. Offer a strange catch. We don't have a strange catch. And we're five Echo short of sampling today's catch. Okay. Hopefully that will be there the next time we're around. Let's gather some gossip. Okay. Well, that's the same as before. We don't need to read that a third time. Um, uh, visit the curator. Continue. Ask about the Grand san Sanatorium. There we go. Oh, Silkskin. You don't want to know. The chuckling becomes a cough. We don't die here below, not unless we go to Z. So we need something else, somewhere to end. Oh, this is getting good, isn't it? Okay, let's continue. Right, I think we've done all we can here, and the next step is to find Mount Palmerston. So, let's have a quick look at the map here. Um, there's a little bit unexplored here. And we should have a quick look up here and possibly along here a little bit. Um, yes. I'm not seeing it, and I believe they did say northeast, so it should be around here somewhere. Let's find out, shall we? We have nine fuel, so let's bear that in mind, because it was a little bit embarrassing last time, and we only have three food, which is going to be a problem, but these bats might solve that one for us. Okay, Cant Abyss. That's not what we're looking for. And looks like we're going to avoid those, uh, those bats, that's good. Discovered Purewell Point. That's not what we want. Right, let's see what we can find. Ooh, something new. Let's try not to get eaten by it, shall we? 
The air trembles, a breath of change passes. We've discovered Bonnie Brief. Okay, it's obviously not here. Let's loop down and look east of Hunter's Keep. Seems like a sensible idea. Oh, what's happening here? Burning blue. A hiss of horror from the lookout. The glim lamp at the front of the ship is sputtering and arcing, fizzing with blue light, even as you watch the blue fades. But it's not a good omen. Attempt to calm them. It was a perfect natural a perfectly natural explanation. Err uh, Err uh, Err uh. The darkness underneath is more than the absence of light. It's a physical presence which distorts the shape of the world. Your light melts the darkness and restores sanity to the world. You explain something of this to your zealers. It's not the first time they've heard it but they seem slightly less nervous. We've gained a fragment, that's good. And we've succeeded in a heart's challenge. Nice. Okay, so let's carry on and let's loop around and let's head back south. Unfortunately, until we know where Mount Palmerston is, this is going to be a little bit hard for us to do. And I get the feeling that worm is going to catch up with us if we're unlucky. And if we're lucky, it'll be tasty. Where are we? Pure World Point. We'll look a bit to the east of it and see what we can see. Sad that I could just listen to this music. Just listen to it all day. I love it. Fire off. Someone screams. Right, let's have a let's visit Demo Island. Let's see what's here. Because it looks like it has a port. The Iron and Misery Company Funging Station. How do you fung? Can we dock here? Yes, I think we can. Hopefully they sell food, because we're running a little short. There we go. Just turning in and dock. M has a funger operation here, felling giant beluga shrooms for building materials, harvesting Kerali for its medicinal purposes. It's a desperate little outpost of something like civilization. Up puffs the ab affable factor. Oh, hello, Captain. Thank God for visitors. We'd go quite mad out here otherwise. <laughs> quite mad. How can we be of assistance? So, we can have tea, we can explore, we can accept a volunteer, but we're full of crew, we can gather supplies. Let's do that one. Some of the island's fungus is good to eat, some is poisonous, hallucinogenic, or mischievous. Good luck. What do we have? The spores lie thick on your face, they coat your tongues. One crewman begins to whimper. Oh, Christ, he says. They've reached my heart. I think I'll be harvest yet. Harvest yet! You have to drag him back to the ship before he'll calm again. So we gained five terror and we were unlucky. Never mind. Let's have tea with the factor. Unlocked with something awaits you. Stories await when you next make port. You sit on the veranda of the factor's house, looking out over the fungal jungle. An expanse of green and sour gold. 
The air is thick with hovering spores. The scones are stale. Even the tea tastes a little mouldy. But the factor is good company. He shares odd stories about the Gant Pole where monsters swarm, about the seductions of the principles of coral, the infestation at Feather Haven. He also has a load of beleaguers frond carted aboard your ship. Yay! He waves away your thanks. I've eaten so much of the stuff that I fear I might be transformed entirely into fungus. He leans confidentially towards you. It happens, you know. But one does have to eat rather a lot of it first. So we've gained nine fragments. That's good. We have 130 of those now. We've gained one surprise. We've lost two terror. Not bad. Not bad all at all. Do we dare gather supplies? Why not? Let's try it. We've gained two terror. We've gained one supply. We were fortunate. Not bad. What else can we do? Are there any shops here? There are shops. There are expensive shops. And there's nothing else we can do here by the looks of it. So, let's leave the dock. Um, we're running short on supplies and we have a little bit of money, so let's avoid those pirates to start off with and head back towards Fallen London. We've discovered Moody's Light. Stock there quickly. Or not, seeing as there's a pirate there. Okay, let's have a quick look at the map. Uh, I think we want to swing around south towards Hunter's Keep. Yes, that makes sense to me. Now I've been noticing in this game there's a couple of things that we need that we don't have yet and one of them is illumination. It takes us too long to illuminate a target and by that time they've done a lot of damage to us, let's say. Oh, he's given up, that's good. And he's going to come alongside us, I think, which is not so good. The air trembles. A breath of change passes. So one of the things that I think we really have to do is work on this mirror score. Time. That's mirrors. Mirrors are 27. It would be better for us if we had a higher score there, I think. That way, we'd illuminate them faster. Hunter's Keep. Haven't been here for a while. Hunter's Keep. A lump of dark rock swathed in mist, like a hundred other Hunter's Z Islands. But there's a grand house, windows aglow, lawns impossibly green and lush in the false starlight, great gravel paths. You stand on the dock as the sea nudges is the ship's sides. An unexpectedly warm breeze carries the faintest trace of lavender. So, we can have lunch with any of the three sisters. Even, okay, even, news, news, that's a new one. Uh, even when the sisters aren't feeling sociable, they can be tempted out of their lair by the smell of new stories. So, we need decent news. We've, we're acquainted with the sisters. Okay, nothing really helps us there. Alright, so let's reconnoitre the island. Go. Ships ready come here. Nothing changes, even the weather. The house is the heart of the island, the house and the sisters, but the Admiralty may be happy to know that nothing has changed at least. So that's good. They're slightly less creepy this time. Um, right, I think we had a, had lunch with Phoebe last time, so let's have lunch with Lucy. A daft tale. Lucy leans over and whispers to you confidentially. A complex story about a butler, a pig, and an inheritance. You don't follow all the details of the plot, but somehow the pig ends up in the attic, and the, and the butler in the vicar's bed. Candles flicker, dishes enter and leave, and the wind butts gently at the window panes. 
By the time the plum pudding arrives, you're as cheerful as you've been in months. So we gained one supplies. Excellent. We've lost a load of hunger. We've become acquainted with the Sisters of the Keep. And we've lost 10 Terra. Nice. Okay, the parlor is empty. That's the same as before. Right. I think we're going to be in trouble when we launch. Let's see. No. But we're very low on fuel, so we'll head back into London anyway. Low Barnet. Looks very soggy. Right, so we need to loop around here, don't we? So here we are, back in London. Like we packed just enough fuel for it. And it looks like we still don't turn nearly well enough. Are we going to meet that crab? Let's meet that crab. Let's have a little fight before we get into port. Okay. The Auroral Megalops. These are the younger form of the gargantuan Z crabs driven up from their spawning grounds in the south by peculiar radiations. Younger they may be, but they're still large enough to consume a pony with messy and clattering glee or to pose a menace to ill-prepared ships. Let's fight. Okay, you have engaged your enemy. Right, so let's start off by chucking some light at him. And... You see, this one takes five seconds, but it illuminates both of us. This one takes eight seconds, but only illuminates the opponent. I'm going to let he's going to be doing that. So we actually, I think, should do that as well. Let's see how that goes. Yes. Okay, so that's illuminated the 30. So another one of those would get us in. Um, but we could do something here to reduce our light. That takes fuel. Reduces distance slightly. Reduces your illumination. Slightly increases distance. Let's try that. And then let's just chuck over a flare. Three, two, one, go. Well that worked well, didn't it? So that will illuminate us slightly, but it'll illuminate them more. They are well over 50 now, so we could start attacking them, but let's observe them. Increases both your and enemy illumination by five and gains observations. Ten observations will earn you something after the battle. So let's just do one of those. And we'll follow that up by... Ooh, if we shoot it, we'll kill it. So let's just see what we can do first. Alright, let's put our light up. Okay, we've gained two observations. So... Quite frankly, we could chuck a few of those across. Let's just see what it's going to do. So, two, four, six, eight, ten. There we go. Let's see what it does. So, that's one. Oh, it's doing something different now. Lunge. The beast's monstrous jaws can rend timbers and mangle iron, but they're close enough. To, if but if they're close enough to harm you, they're exposed. Okay, so that requires an illumination of 50. It's got us illuminated to 95. So let's do an evade after that. Okay, so that's given us uh, observations up to 7. Oh, we're so close. And this, let's see what that did. 
That did three points of damage. Okay, not particularly worried about that. An appalling cry. If you survive, this sound will remain in your dreams like a maggot in a peach. That's going to raise terror, isn't it? And our terror is actually quite high. So, I think we're actually going to have to stop messing around now and kill the thing. But let's see how this delumination works. So that's given... Oh, only plus two terror. That's not really a problem. Um, okay. What's this do? Submerge reduces illumination. Not a problem. Let's give it an observation. And let's see where we go from there. One. Yeah, we'll get that in first. That's good. Nine. Nine. Not fair. All right. One more and then we'll kill it. Okay. Ah. Okay. That reduced its light, but not by much. Alright, we now have 12 uh, observations, so that's good. And Okay, that increases terror, but it never got a chance to do it. Okay, we can butcher it for supplies, we can dissect it for knowledge, and we can record observations. Let's start with that. Okay, but we've gained one fragment, which is excellent. Uh-huh, alright. Continue there. We can butcher it, or we can dissect it. We're nearly in port, so we don't need the food. Let's dissect it for knowledge. You set to work with your knives and acids. It's an undistinguished adolescent specimen, a megalops of one of the deep Z crab species. But its eyes, normally vestigial in these troglytic beasts, are large and rather beautiful. The golden glow is almost gone now, though sparks leap now and then to your knife. We've gained a fragment. We succeeded at a page's challenge. Yes, very nice. Okay, let's get into port before something else decides to try and eat us. And there, I think we shall end this episode. Here we go. Back in the docks. Next episode, we shall try to find Mount Palmerston and see what else has happened. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please like, please subscribe. I'm Simon Parsons, and this has been Sunless Sea. Thank you, and good night.